Hey folks, good morning. Welcome to uh, another vlog. Catching me, just leaving Binbrook as I head west. Off towards Tealby and off the other side of the, uh, the walls itself. And so you might be thinking, what am I doing today? Well, I'm doing a, another Bardney Grand Fondo, which is, uh, again, I'll keep repeating myself, 120 kilometers, 75 miles up the road. It's Kermundley Mere, so I'm going to be dropping into there, crawling back up the other side to uh, Paper Mill Lane, and on the flat for a while. As you can see, it's a beautiful day after a few days of rain, which stopped play. So let's take a look at this route. I'll bring you up on the screen. This week I signed up to Trading Peaks. So I'm going to use that to show you the route. Like I said, heading towards Seal B next. Then I'm going to be heading south towards Rugby, crossing over the uh, A158, that runs between Lincoln and, uh, well, Rugby itself. Down we go to Bardney, stopping there for a rest. That's at the uh, 60 kilometre mark, exactly. Heading east towards La La Bomba up Green Lane and uh, yeah from there continuing through Scamblesby up the Climate Road Gate Road up onto the Bluestone Heath Road and from there Welton the world at some point total 121 kilometers I think today so once again thanks for joining us it's a glorious day so what I've got to tell you today, quite a few things actually. A little bit annoyed with myself this morning, I got into right Mardi. Everything took ages to do, everything went wrong. Just took ages to get out, it's really annoyed and uh, had, a, had a bit of a go with my mum and dad for no reason. I mean, it was really just me, so I'm going to have to apologise to them later on. Got myself worked up. Mostly because of my last ride really, when I was out, uh, my Wahoo stopped working and it's broken. One of the buttons isn't doing what it should be doing. There's a little bit of a mind of its own. So I've had to spend some money on one of these. It's a Garmin 520 Plus. Probably get a Wahoo again at some point. Problem was getting onto the bike with bloody mounts and things like that. Would right pay a little longer than I thought it would. So you might remember I had a, like a mount where it is now, I'd had a, like a GoPro thing underneath. That uh, attached to the uh, stem at the top there through the bolts. So that had to come off, which meant we adjusted in position of the tri bars and the lamp on the left ear. And I just did all this this morning. Can I actually set things up yesterday? Well, I thought I did. And then I came to put my garment in. And because it's uh, horizontal instead of it vertically positioned with the mount, when you put it in, it's, it's facing on its side. Yeah, the mount, not this particular mount, but a mount I bought in the week, was described as an aero uh, mount, but it's not at all, because it don't work with a Garmin properly, it's at the wrong angle. So I bought two of those, one for each bike, what a waste of money that was. <laughs> and then this morning I came to put my gilet on as well, I couldn't find it, I was looking around for ages. Uh, bearing in mind, not really for a couple of days, I was like, where the hell is it, where did I put it? washing machine still, sat at the bottom, because it's been raining. So I'm like, bloody hell, if I realised that, I could have put it on the radiator just to dry out or something like that. So I ended up wearing this thing, which is okay, it's not a problem. All in all though, I must say, I'm pleased with the, uh, the Garmin. Got my uh, power meter and my Garmin Vivo Active uh, 3 smartwatch. So knowing that, I'm having to use my watch at the moment, because it's not as accurate as the Wahoo uh, heart rate strap, which is also broken. So at the moment, I'm just making do with the watch. I know it's just okay normally when you're on the bars, but if you're at your seat, and at your saddle going up hills, the accuracy is very poor. So more expense <laughs> having to find a Wahoo strap. I seem to have gone up in price. Oh my God, I can see a tornado. Oh no, it's not. It's just bell much trust me to, <laughs> like a little, uh, funnel coming down from the clouds over there. Anyway, uh, yeah, it seems to be really expensive. The uh, Wahoo one 
59.99. I was like, what? Oh, I've been right on me this morning, aren't I? I can't remember spending that much money on my uh, heart rate monitor. So let's lighten the mood a little bit. Did anybody watch um, my last video, Cycle Chat with Adam Watkins on Friday? If you haven't watched it yet, I'll stick a link in the corner and at the end of the video as well. So Adam Watkins, if you don't know who he is, if you don't know his channel, he's also a YouTuber, but he's also a long distance cyclist, just like myself, or an Audaxer. Yeah, uh, been watching his couple channel for maybe two and a half years, something like that. And we met at Paris Press Paris last August. So we had a good old chat about the jog bikes, his obsession with dirt, his track attack. So I hope you enjoy it. So as you can see, I ended up with this Garmin Edge. I was actually looking for a backup GPS, uh, but now I've got to spend more money. Even looked at the E-Trix, the E-Trix 30X, I think it's called, which is battery operated, double A batteries. I'm saying thinking about TCR next year. If I got this and the Roam, would have an E-Trix as well, third GPS, would that be over the top? Because at the end of the day, I've got my phone as well. Most of Europe, even though we're, in, you know, we're leaving Europe, or well, leaving the EU, Data room and charges are still free across Europe as far as I'm aware. Stopping the lights at Rugby. Entering Bardney now. I may well nip to the butchers. Quite a few people rave about the butchers. Include uh, Chris Scalehorn and uh, Al High that I used to ride with. Both of them <laughs> have raved about this butchers in the past. So, uh, may end up there if it's open. There it is, closed. <laughs> but, da -da, I actually just made it in the nick of time. Closed at half one. And since been sat here, I've had three, three customers try and go in. So, uh, seems like they're shutting a little bit too early. So, gone for a steak steak and onion pie and uh, I've gone for plain flat, flapjack as well but there was loads of other stuff but it was eager to go so I was like uh well that and that <laughs> but next time I think I might go for like a pork pie or a uh, chocolate flapjack or something like that mm -mm -mm. anyway can't complain it's lovely I don't know where well, you can see the rainbow <laughs> probably not to talk it's quite faint so on the way back I've recalibrated my power meter as well so it's a little bit more realistic now on the way here I did calibrate it before left but it won't be didn't seem very accurate so I just did it again so it's a bit better now plenty of puddles about rain over the last few days and last night it actually snowed a bit of wet snow didn't really stick around and then it turned rain again But for a brief moment, there was a little bit of a covering. So I wanted to do a look at my uh, training schedule for the rest of this week and uh, share it with you guys. Starting with tomorrow. So we're going to go Sunday's ride. Hoping to do a 200 kilometer ride. A very hilly one. Show you the route up on screen. As you can see, wiggles and winds its way up and down the Lincolnshire Wolds. Couple of opportunities to uh, stop for food into next week. Um, I'm only working Wednesday and Thursday next week, so I've got Monday, Monday's ride, Tuesday's ride. I believe they're both Grand Fondos, though Tuesday may be 140. See what I feel like, really, and then back to work. Wednesday and Thursday, 
So we're going to do either a morning ride or an after word work ride, about 30k. And as you can see, a bit of a workout. I think it's 10 minutes, 10 minute, no, actually 20 minute warm up, a 10 minute active uh, interval. Following on from that, six minutes hard, three minutes easy, four times do that over and finish with a cool down. So that's what I'm going to do, try and do every, every day that I'm uh, working from home, either in the morning or after work, depending on what the weather's like, whether can be asked to get out of bed. And if I just come back to the calendar, you can see that I've not sorted out what I'm doing next weekend yet. If the weather's good, might be bikepacking. The only problem with bikepacking at the moment is uh, the whole of Lincolnshire and East Ryde and Yorkshire are in tier three. So it's uh, we're breaking the law for staying overnight. So the only way I can stay either within the law is to camp out somewhere in tier two. There's only guidance in place for people who live in a tier three area when it comes to overnight stays, it's just guidance. All right. I've seen the old roadie about. I've seen a few people about to bikes, but there's no, to be fair, I've not seen a lot of people out on bikes today. And it's not actually that cold as I thought it was going to be. So let's talk briefly about the, uh, the Garmin Edge. First impressions, first impressions rather, pretty good. Obviously it's not quite as easy as a Wahoo in some respects. It's like zoom in and out, but you can actually pan around as well, which will probably come in quite useful at times. So for instance, I'm on the uh, climbing screen at the moment. Don't know why you can see. No obvious means of zooming out. And in fact, when I looked at the menu, I couldn't even find a zoom option for this particular screen. It was a uh, hill. I had it ridden. It's nice to be able to zoom out and to see the elevation for the complete course as well. That'd be hiding away in the menu somewhere. Seems to be a ton of data field options. Configured, spent a couple of hours last night configuring it in a way closer to what I normally would use on the Wahoo. A few more tweaks still to do. So it all has to be done through the uh, Garmin itself, the head unit head units so it's not quite as easy as the Wahoo Companion app in that respect but how often do you change that stuff? Not so concerned about that. Now this particular model is not touchscreen and I didn't want touchscreen especially for long distance riding. I think touchscreen is probably the worst thing you can possibly get. I'd rather have a physical buttons any other day of the week. You ever tried using your phone with your gloves on? Yeah <laughs> I can't imagine doing that on a Garmin. But they're useless, I keep, have to keep stopping all the time. Here's a bit of an example of uh, something I've not quite configured right. And this is meant to be the uh, lap summary screen. Two fields on there I'm really impressed with actually. Probably can do on the Wahoo, but I've never really thought about it before. Is a ETA to the destination and the sunset time as well. So I can see on my screen the sunset. sunset at 16 minutes to four and I should be finishing my ride at 13 minutes past four. So that's pretty useful to know. Be interested to see actually how accurate the Garmin is paired with the Garmin watch. Because I know when it was Garmin to Wahoo, a Garmin smartwatch to the Wahoo element. The heart rate was well out. Next big climb, Rogate Road. Pay the close, close attention to the heart rate, see if it's a uh, well out because the wahoo was like 60 beats per minute out or something it was going down instead of up <laughs> when it was going uphill nice rogate road up to uh bluestone heath road here at scamblesby the orangey glow of the setting sun as i look around it just seems like it's getting on getting on Bang a gong, get it on. Hope you've enjoyed this video, folks. I know it started off a bit, bit moany, bit ranty. Just having one of those days, but I'm all good now. It's 
amazing what a bike ride can do. For those of you who aren't aware, I don't know if it's on my channel yet, next Friday on my channel on Cycle Chat, I've got a very special guest. Someone, just about all of us know, she's, uh, she's one of my favourite channels that I've been watching over the course of the last three years when I started really getting into watching YouTube stuff. And she is Katie Cookerborough. So come and join me as I uh, interview her next Friday, half seven. Tell you, there's loads of guests I'd love to get on Cycle Chat one day, and uh, well, one of those is probably Matt Stevens. I'd love to get Matt Stevens on the show, that'd be really, really good. Have you seen his uh, Christmas video for Sigma Sports? I tell you what, I'll take a look in the, the corner somewhere around the screen or at the end. It's really, really good. If I could get him on Cycle Chat, that would be amazing. Make my day. I am actually looking for somebody for, uh, I don't know if it's Christmas Eve, that, that Friday, it might be even Christmas Day itself, I'm still looking for somebody to uh, do a show on that date, so that would be amazing if we get Matt Stevens on. I'll tell you what, so I'm looking to get on the show, uh, give you a bit of a clue. Morning! Who's that? Who says that? Morning! And loud. <laughs> Talking of Juliet, of course, um, I'm going to be reaching out to her in the new year, I think, or maybe again before Christmas, see if we'll get on the show. If you want to see on Cycle Chat, go on her channel, stick a comment below some of her videos, see if she'll come on the show. I'll tell you what, though, coming back to today's ride, I'm not doing too bad for time. I think it was about 10 to 11, 11 o'clock. I finally, finally left this morning. So I'm gonna get home just after dark, really. Oh, still a little bit of snow left up here. I guess there's still plenty of time ahead. Cause traditionally we get to our uh, snow after Christmas, don't we? January, February, March, April even sometimes. It's very, very rare that we'll get a white December, white Christmas, whatever you like to call it. Tell you one thing is for certain, when all the leaves are off the trees, you get to see some different views that you don't see any other time of year. Beaumont transmitter over there. That's Wellsdale Bottom, Biscothorpe, Gate and Lee Wald over there, where I found a couple of uh, Fords actually. That actually reminds me of something else I was going to say about Katie Cookerber. Uh, during the interview, you'll find out she says, Link is just flat, isn't it? <laughs> it's often, it's often a belief that Lincolnshire is flat, but it's not around here, that's for sure. So what I'd like to do in the new year, if I possibly can, I'd like to invite Katie to Lincolnshire for a ride. I think that'd be pretty cool. Perhaps you can go on to Katie's uh, channel at some point on her video and say Ricky, Richard Lake says Lincolnshire is not flat and he challenges you to come to the county next year. Our show really tough route with all the hills in it thrown in. Just going up the climb at Weltonley Wold and it just occurred to me I didn't uh, really look at my heart rate when I was going up with Scandlesby. So I'll check that back on Trading Peaks later on when I get home. Interesting to see is any better in terms of accuracy than it is between a Garmin and a Wahoo. My feeling is it's not going to make any difference. I had a uh, question from Robin Biwas the other day asking about whether I'd received the gloves from Planet X. I can confirm they're in my back pocket. Switched over to Finna gloves around lunchtime. 
say I left today at 11 o'clock, so didn't really need the thicker gloves. But I may have to fit, stick them on in the last hour of this ride, who knows. But they seem quite good. I'll drop a link below the video to those uh, particular pair of lobster gloves on Planet X. If anybody, wants to check them out, if anybody wants to check them out for themselves. Incidentally, although not applicable to uh, Planet X, if anybody buys anything from Amazon, from uh, links on my channel, I do get a teeny weeny little bit of commission. So if you want to support the channel that way, you can do that as well. I've seen a few people do that over the course, over the course of the last six weeks or so. That's buying presents for Christmas for themselves. I think it must be about five weeks ago, someone bought some uh, Zephyl straps. That thing I used to uh, hold my bike pump in place. I think I got an amazing 25 pence commission. I know what I know what you're thinking, don't spend it all at once. I can tell heart rate watches, doesn't matter if it's a Wahoo or Garmin, it's still not accurate. My heart rate is actually falling instead of going up. Currently 123 beats per minute and falling and going uphill. Yes, yeah, so I'm definitely going to get a heart rate strap. So, <laughs> if anybody wants to buy 20 Zephyl straps, links down below. <laughs> In fact, just stood a little bit of rough, quick maths. I'd have to sell another 499 Zephyl straps to replace the wrist strap with all that commission. I need uh, someone to perhaps buy a yacht or a speedboat or something. If I had to put a link in there for one of those, you never know, somebody might just buy a car off Amazon. I don't know well you can see with the sun. It's teetering on the edge. It's kind of why I don't like stopping watching this time of year because days are short and it's bloody cold. As I'm sure you'll agree. In fact, let's get a shot. A quick stop. As the sun's disappeared behind the cloud there, it's probably a good time to uh, finish the uh, vlog, actually. If anybody's got any questions, stick them down below. Don't forget to like, comment and share. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Again, Friday, Katie Cookerbrook, half seven. Don't forget to tune in. Anyway, for me, from the cold Lincolnshire Wolds, I'll see you again soon.